With the Klee banner set to end in a few days, it's time to start looking ahead. Yes, Japanophiles and weebs rejoice! We are finally going to get someone from Inazuma. Hey everyone, I'm Epic Edge and in today's Passer Pull video, we're taking a closer look at Kazuha to see if he's worth your hard-earned Prima Gems. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at Kazuha's normal attack. Uh, Animation-wise, his normal attacks are a 5-hit chain, uh, similar to most other one-hand sword users. Uh, as we take a look at his multipliers over here, we see that it's underwhelming. <laughs> uh, even at level 7, the multipliers aren't particularly high. Uh, even his charge attack multipliers aren't anything to write home about. Uh, what's pretty nice though is his plunge attack. Uh, for reference, the multipliers are exactly the same as Shao, which should clue you in on the playstyle Kazuha is designed to have. Uh, next up, we have Chihayaburu, uh, Kazuha's elemental skill. Uh, this will pull in nearby enemies towards Kazuha and deal AoE animal damage before launching him into the air. Now, that's <clears throat> uh, the skill can be held down to charge up this skill <laughs> and deal animal damage over a much wider area. Now this skill does have an extension, uh, right after Kazuha is launched into the air after using this skill, uh, he can unleash a plunge attack and that will go ahead and deal animal damage. Uh, after impact, Kazuha will create a small wind tunnel, which is what you're seeing over here, uh, that will draw in nearby opponents. So taking a look at the multipliers, we can see some nice numbers, not overly amazing, but pretty good. Uh, at level 7, we get 288 via the tap activation and 391% via the hold activation. Uh, again, these aren't crazy high numbers by any means, but since you'll be chaining this with a plunge attack, Kazuha does have a nice bursty chain to work with. And let's not forget that you'll be adding swirl damage into the mix. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have Kazuha Slash, his elemental burst, which honestly has really nice uh, animation. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, Kazuha will slash forward and deal animal damage. This then creates an autumn whirlwind, which is like the outer boundary of the field that you're seeing over there. Uh, if the skill comes into contact with another element, uh, there will be elemental absorption and the autumn whirlwind will deal additional elemental damage. Uh, as always, elemental absorption occurs only once. Uh, so going ahead to the multipliers, we see the initial slash damage stands out a bit at 393%. The damage over time is also nice at 180% and the additional elemental damage is at 54%. Now, factoring in the duration of 8 seconds, uh, an energy cost of 60, and a cooldown of only 15 seconds, Kazuha should be able to fire this skill off quite consistently, especially if he can trigger a lot of reactions. Now, overall, I think Kazuha has a well-designed kit that makes him extremely versatile, and I anticipate that he'll, you know, he'll be loads of fun uh, to play around with as you journey through Diva. So now that we've taken a look at his skills, let's take a look at some good swords for Kazuha. Uh, now I haven't done the math, I'm gonna be honest, and so these recommendations are just based off of like my initial uh, theory crafting, I guess, or you can say that if I had him, this these are the swords that I would give him personally. Uh, now, given how powerful Animo characters have become thanks to the um, buff to Elemental Mastery, I think having EM on your weapon is a very good choice. Uh, you know, whether you're using Kazuha as a support or a damage dealer, it's going to be good. Uh, so let's take a look at the available options for that kind of mindset. Uh, first up, we have Kazuha's Sword, Freedom Sworn. Uh, I like Elemental Mastery in the Swords for Kazuha simply because this means we can stock up on crit and crit damage on our artifacts without having to chase EM too hard. And what I mean by this is that you don't have to hope that you get about 3-4 rolls into Elemental Mastery just to get it up. And 
you know, again, lowering the gear quality that you have to have. <laughs> um, at the same time, you know, the passive is absolutely in sync with what Kazuha wants to do when he is on the field. So this is going to very likely be Kazuha's BIS 5-star weapon. Uh, next, we have the Alley Flash. Oops. The Alley Flash. And I like the passive effect again. Uh, what I also like about this weapon is its base attack, which is why I was over here. Uh, you'll see that the base attack at level 90 is 620. Uh, this easily puts it on par with other 5-star weapons. Uh, however, the EM is really low at just 55 that's the peak amount uh, you know so if you use this you'll definitely need to source quite a bit of elemental mastery from your artifacts uh, next we have the iron stick uh, if you've been lucky enough to have several sword prototypes lying around in your inventory uh, this should be an amazing sword for Kazuha uh, since you know uh, Kazuha will get two clean hits with animal damage when he uses his elemental skill into plunge attack combo. You can max out the passive effect immediately and deal some good damage. Now, if you don't want EM on your sword, I get it, I understand. Uh, you can easily use go to options like Jade Cutter if you have it and no one's using it. Uh, you can use the Black Sword if you have it and no one's using it. Uh, as for which non-EM sword to use, uh, just make sure to look at whether or not the passive itself synergizes with Kazuha's kit, as well as the gaps in your artifact rolls. Um, having the secondary stat, uh, the way that I see it, it's supposed to kind of like plug in uh, what's missing, right? Uh, so if you're missing, if you're low on the crit rate, go with a crit rate weapon. Uh, if you're lacking crit damage for how you want to build Kazuha, then you should go ahead and go look for crit damage, right? Uh, as for the artifacts, I think, you know, if you're going to build him for more of a sub DPS and support role, you definitely want the four piece viridescent set. Uh, I think that's how all the animal characters are going to be built until we get a new animal based you know uh, artifact set uh, Kazuha will be dealing a lot of swirls and so the additional swirl damage is good uh, lowering elemental resistance will also be pretty good uh, if you're going to lean more towards a damage dealing build uh, I think the split between a two-piece viridescent and a two-piece gladiator set is the way to go uh, similar to how you would probably build uh, Jean yeah. <clears throat> now that we've covered most of what we need to uh, it's time for the verdict pass or pull uh, okay. in a vacuum I think Kazuha is definitely a pull his utility is amazing I you know it's like Kazuha took a look at all of the existing uh, animal characters and decided hey I like what you do with this one I like what you do with this one why don't I copy all of you and do all that you guys do <laughs> you know um, so essentially having Kazuha is kind of like having all the other existing animal characters in the game uh, this also means that Kazuha can take on many roles and I think he can be quite a good DPS character if built that way he's gonna be a really good support character if you want to build him that way so that flexibility is extremely valuable in and of, of itself uh, of course as a jack of all trades Kazuha is a master of none uh, while he can do what other characters can, he is easily of a lower tier. Now, I'm not saying that he sucks compared to all of these other animal characters. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I guess what I'm saying here is that, you know, okay, let, 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 let's let's go into an example. Um, a good example of this would be uh, Shao, right? 
uh, like we saw earlier, uh, Kazuha and Shao share the same plunge attack multipliers. Uh, but Shao is able to execute multiple plunge attacks in a row, Kazuha cannot. So Shao ramps up the damage much faster than Kazuha can. And that's what I'm talking about. It's a lower tier. And this kind of translates to all the other effects that Kazuha brings to the table. And that's just how it is. But you can see that as a negative. But at the same time, you know, what makes him so special is he's in team building because he's able to do so much. Uh, you know, since his kit is so versatile, um, you can slot him into almost any team you want and he's going to work. Okay. Um, the fact that he can do so many different things means you can save a slot on your team. Uh, so this opens up an entire world of possible combinations to try out. Uh, so, hmm, another example. Okay, let's say you want to bring Shao and Sucrose. Like, not necessarily them, but you want to use those effects that they bring to the table. Uh, okay, so Shao with a plunge attack, Sucrose with her crowd control. But you don't want to bring two of them in one team. Uh, then Kazuha's your guy, right? Uh, at the same, this means you know you you free up a slot for another character who can provide more support for the like overall win condition of your team. Words hard. Okay, so uh, for if you've been lis listening closely, uh, you may have noticed that I said in a vacuum. Unfortunately, Kazuha's banner is in a tough spot even if like the four stars who will be on it are pretty good uh, what i mean by this is okay, we're all aware okay, that ayaka and yoimiya will be coming in the next patch uh, i think both of those waifus are looking to be pretty nuts in terms of their power level so kazuha feels like he's suffering from the position of his banner and to put this into perspective, like this entire situation really, really uh, reminds me of when Albedo was released. Uh, personally, I thought Albedo was a pretty good character, and over time, it has been shown that Albedo is a pretty good character. Uh, unfortunately, his sales were really low, and I might be remembering this wrong, but in I think he was the lowest selling banner for a new character and you know I think this like the reason behind this was the fact that we all knew for a fact that we would be getting Ganyu, Xiao and then Hu Tao right after his banner and this current situation is very reminiscent of that I feel like Kazuha is in the exact same spot now, as a result, we all have a big decision to make, right? Do we go ham wishing for Kazuha or do we wait and try to get Ayaka slash Yoimiya? The answer really is in how your roster looks right now. Uh, do you need animal characters? Are you short in that department? Uh, do you need a true DPS? because you are playing on an account that you know you did not re-roll and you have a ton of supporting characters with no dps or do you have a bunch of dps characters that you know but no support characters uh, yeah you know these are some of the questions that you have to ask yourself in order to get to like the answer to your to the answer like this will help you decide whether or not pulling for Kazuha is going to be the best decision for you okay <clears throat> uh, in summary Kazuha himself is pretty good very nice solid kit that flows pretty well great aesthetics uh, very nice utility and flexibility in a vacuum where we only look at Kazuha himself 
he's a pull. Definitely. But given how Ayaka and Yoimiya are coming, uh, you need to take a closer look at your current roster to see which of the coming Inazuma characters will address your biggest need. Okay. That said, what about you guys? You know, uh, will you be wishing for Kazuha? Uh, do you think he's a good character? Do you think he sucks? You know, whatever you like, whatever you guys think about him, let's discuss that in the comments below. And that's gonna wrap up this video. Please don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until the next video, stay epic.